your day just got radiant. Are you ready to be inspired by the best professional coaches in the world? You're listening to Radiant Radio Now. Welcome to this episode of Radiant Radio, brought to you by Radiant Coaches Academy. Coming from Vancouver Island, I'm your co-host, Meredith Bissaker. And I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Misty Jackson Derringer, and we are so excited today to have business coach, the Get It Done Girl, Marilyn Dollar, coming in from Chicago. Marilyn, are you there? Hey, y'all. I'm here. Hey, y'all. I love it. You sound like a Nashvillian. <laughs> she does. <laughs> yeah, already. How are you doing today? Awesome. As you know, it is March in Chicago, so it's a little bit gray here, Yeah. but I am keeping my spirits up. I got a lot of good stuff going on. Incredible. Well, we are so thankful to have you on today's show. And um, just to give us, our listeners a little bit of information about yourself, you know, tell us, tell us about yourself, your background and, and where you came from. Sure. Well, where I came from, came from, I actually did come from Tennessee, Misty, so you may hear a little bit of that. I knew you were a soul sister. <laughs> I could tell by the y'all. Yeah, you, you, you kind of don't lose that no matter where you live, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I was originally born in Memphis. Uh, my dad's a Navy guy, so we, we bounced from beach to beach most of my life. And about 20 years ago, I landed in Chicago. And I have really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I've had a great career here in CPG, which is consumer packaged goods. So I worked for companies like Quaker Oats and PepsiCo and Wrigley and Mars Chocolate. Awesome. So you are, you've had this, this career, but now your focus has totally changed, Marilyn, where you are supporting other women who yep. have a side hustle as well. Yep. So tell us more about that. How did you fall into that? So it's interesting. I, I've always had a little side hustle in me. Even when I was little, <laughs> I would, you know, sell uh, my Trixie Belden books and Barbie dolls that I no longer played with. And I, for the most part of my youth, I grew up on an island. Like I said, my dad was in the Navy and we were in the Azores and we didn't have a lot of resource. We, we, I had a lot of friends who were um, my age, but they didn't have the same toys I did, and I didn't have the same toys they did. So we would a lot of times trade. And I started this business when I was maybe eight or nine, where I would just have these pop-up sales. And I, I'm sure I charged like a quarter. It wasn't anything outrageous. But to see the joy in all of my friends and even kids I didn't know, buying something that we didn't, there was no other way to buy it on the island. Like there wasn't a toy store, I, you know, people had brought stuff or sent stuff overseas to me and it was much more fulfilling than actually having the doll myself. Hmm. And that's probably where it started for me is just seeing other people's joy in something that I could be part of. It's just very fulfilling. Don't you guys feel like that as coaches? Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So that's kind of where it all started for me. And as I, I you know, I got older and I, I started my career and I found that people would confide in me and, and tell me things and they would always have you know, uh, well, could you help me with this? Or what do you think? Or how did you do this? And I have, believe me, y'all, I have lived some adventures in my life and some of them more exciting and some of them more dramatic, right? And you, yeah. you get this experience where you figure out, all right, I can do this. I've survived this. I, you know, I've, I've survived having a, losing a house to a flood. I've survived uh, being married and getting a divorce and raising two kids by myself. Hmm. I've figured out how to get back in the dating scene. I figured out how to get back into the workforce. I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. And while I was a stay-at-home mom, I still had a side hustle. I sold uh, rubber stamps through Stampin' Up. It's a multi-level hmm. marketing company based in Utah and run by two women who I love, Shelly. And I did that for 12 years. And made a pretty good living at it as a side hustle. And I earned the cruise four or five of those years so I could take my husband on a vacation. Wow. So there's a lot of different ways to approach 
business. And I've always been interested in business. My degree is in marketing and international business, which is what I do during the day. Mm-hmm. And in the evening, I coach women predominantly. There's a few men, but predominantly I coach women on how to be high performing at your nine to five, because a lot of us still have a nine to five, mm-hmm. and how to use those high performance skills that you learn in your nine to five and apply them to your side hustle. Mm. So then as you're, you know, trying to balance it all, like f- first step, how about setting some office hours? Instead of feeling guilty when you're with your kids, feel empowered that you've already put in your hours on your side hustle. Mm-hmm. And so coaching women, especially, I think, because we like to think we can do everything. (laughs) Can't we? (laughs) (laughs) I believe we can get real close depending Mm -hmm. on what our target is. Absolutely, I do. Well, it's interesting to me, you know, as uh, as a mom and a wife and someone who has a side hustle, um, how difficult... I find it to be to balance um, self care in that as well because I can I can take care of my family and I can take care of my kids and I can give the attention to my side hustle. But what ends up happening is somewhere in between there, there has to be like this foundation for self care. What are your thoughts on that, and and how have you handled that? Completely agree with you on that, and. I don't know if this is your experience too, Missy, but when you are able to give yourself some love and affection and attention, the three-year-old inside of you is satisfied. Mm -hmm. She doesn't come out and throw a tantrum as often. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Well said. Yeah. Well said. (laughs) Wait, so, you, do you have a three-year-old tantrum inside of you too? Oh, come on. <laughs> yes. She likes tater tots with cheese sauce and frozen <laughs> Snickers and yes. Kool-Aid for dinner. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, I can certainly relate to that, that three-year-old throwing a tantrum because I, I'm eight months, I believe about eight months out of leaving my safe government job to be a full-time coach. So, and I side hustled for almost three years. And there was a point about a year in where I, my body was falling apart, completely falling apart because I was getting up early to work. I was staying up late to work. I loved it. I loved what I was doing. That was part of the problem. And then I would go to work and then dealing with the kids and everything. And it, it, when I realized that I needed to really narrow the focus on what I was doing and book those office hours and walk away from my desk when I was done and not think about for the rest of the day, finally, I started seeing results in my business and feeling better. But we're, I mean, we're talking a terrible, like a really bad flu. And then I got shingles and then I got sick again and I was only 40 years old. Mm. So for women who are coming to you and the couple of men as well, what are they telling you they're struggling with the most, Marilyn? I, I'm really curious because I think that our listeners will be able to relate. Mm-hmm, absolutely. You know, what I hear consistently is my business is not moving forward as fast as I would like it to. Mm-hmm. And when I'm with my kids, I feel like I should be working on my business. When I'm working on my business, I feel like I should be having fun with my kids Mm -hmm. and forget about my relationships. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. What are those? No. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And, and you, you, so what I've learned is everybody is different and we also have a lot of common struggles, Mm -hmm. but how we approach them is very different. Uh, my boyfriend, Jim, has this great tool. It's called a Muse headset. And one of the Radiant coaches brought it in when we were doing our training. She's amazing. I've heard of this. Is mm-hmm. this the meditation? Yes. Oh, yeah. Go. Do tell. This is amazing. She, she is amazing. And she brought this, this little headset in. And she puts it on. And it reads your brain waves. And then it gives you a report. Mm. Well, I've been doing meditation for many years. I lived in a yoga ashram when I was in college and learned um, Buddhism. And I'm almost certified as a a meditation coach myself. Um, I've been in a program now for about a year and a half. But what I've learned is 
it gives you more control over your brain waves. It, and, it, and she proved it. So Jim and I were sitting next to each other and she puts the headset on me and my whole entire brain lights up when she puts <laughs> it on. Right. And, and that's very uh, unusual, apparently. But I use my whole brain to think about something. Mm. You know, I, I look at the positive. I look at the impact. I, I think of it in an emotional, impactful way, like how is this going to affect me or someone else emotionally? And I look at the logic of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And I see it in a positive way. I always look for the positive outcome. That's, that's just the way my brain works. But when she put it on Jim, mostly the back of his brain lit up. Mm some of the left side and the front it's, and everybody's brain is different. Mm -hmm. And what motivates him is the negative side. He doesn't want to fail. Mm -hmm. So he's more motivated by the stick, if you will, the threat of failing uh, or the negative impact of not succeeding. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm more motivated by the opportunity to hit my goal. Yeah. What's possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you start uh, using tools in your coaching practice like that, you, you pretty quickly can get to what motivates someone. And once you find out what motivates them, then you start to see some action. Yeah, yeah, really good point. And as coaches, this is something that we should be locking in on right away with our clients when we do the intake. What is motivating them? Because mm -hmm. uh, the way that we ask our questions, um, we're certainly not leading them, but we need to know what's, what that intrinsic motivation is. It's key. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. For sure. And this, this leads me right into um, my in your opinion questions that I'd like to, to ask you, Marilyn, especially with regards to coaching clients and, um, you know, how do folks get in touch with a side hustle that has an authentic purpose? And, and while I'm along the same lines of what we're talking about, what motivates them, but is, is aligned with their authentic purpose. So it takes a lot of prayer and stillness and listening to your inner drive and, and what really lights your switches, right? So when I, I know that when I was when I was younger and I could see that I was helping other people, that really flipped my switches on. So I know that helping other people and it, it is a very authentic way for me to express uh, my gratitude and my mm -hmm. giving back. Right. And and when you when you resonate with something like that, it's almost like a tuning fork. You know, it goes off and you just feel that vibration of, ah, I'm in the right place at the right time. This is my zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you think about things that you do in your life, if you give yourself that space, you give that three-year-old some time, okay. you know, and let's say for, for half an hour, my inner three-year-old gets to do whatever she wants. That's where you start to get closer to what your real joy is. You take off the well, I have to go do this and I have to go do that. Okay, it can wait for 30 minutes. <laughs> let's just play and let's just have some fun. And yeah. maybe that looks like painting or making some cookies or going outside and just laying in the grass. It, it, it's different for every single person. Uh, but I would say if you're looking for a side hustle, do something that is easy. Mm -hmm. Start mm -hmm. there. You know, when Start I... Simple. Yeah. yeah. When I, when I was a stay at home mom, I mean, I love my kids, but I, I really needed some adult in, in, inter connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I just signed up to be a demonstrator to show people how to stamp. I'd never stamped in my life. It was a totally new thing for me. But when I, what I learned from that experience of being a, a teacher for 12 years many, many people would come to my workshops and I, I had lots of workshops and a lot of them would say, I'm not creative. My friend just dragged me here. I'm not going <laughs> to buy anything. I'm like, yeah, cool. Just sit down and have some fun. I've prepped everything for you. You can copy what I've put out there or you can be creative and do your own thing. But every single time, and I never had somebody at the end of a class not feel like they did something great. They connected with something like every larger. single time, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. single person. 
So if you can find something, and I don't care if it's multi-level marketing, it could be, you know, I felt like when I first signed up, I said, I'm not going to be the Tupperware lady of stamps, am I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and the girl God said, oh, no, it. no, you could just buy your stuff, you know, from yourself. You don't even have to sell it to anybody else. And so I like that. It was approachable to me. And, and I'm, I'm not a high pressure salesperson. I just have fun with what I do. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to have a business for yourself, I think at the height of my Stampin' Up! career, I had about 55 ladies on my team and maybe wow. three or four guys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's, it almost becomes, you know, magnetic, I think. And, mm -hmm. and my experience has been, you know, in maintaining that sense of play or stillness or both. Um, does become like a magnet for success and, and possibility. Um, next, in your opinion, why do you think that we avoid that playfulness slash stillness in order to get in our zone when it, it, is, it, seems, it seems like such a simple super highway to get there? Mm -hmm. But we avoid it. We do avoid it. And, and I'll tell you, one of the reasons that we have such a hard time with this is because we value just about everything else before we value ourselves. Mm. Yeah. What do you think that's about? That's a great question. I mean, as a mom, you know, I'm always going to put my kids first. Mm -hmm. As a wife, I always put my husband first. When I'm at work, I put everybody at work first. And it, it's, you get to a point in your life and where I'm at now, I, I have a really tremendous amount of respect for myself. And I have been very purposeful in building that respect and very purposeful in enjoying the journey and saying, okay, I'm going to go to Orange Theory today for an hour mm -hmm. and I'm committed to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to meditate in my meditation class every other Wednesday and I'm committed to that and so building that in I know I'm a very group oriented person so I build in interactivity with other people that helps keep me accountable because uh -huh. you know when it's just you it's easy to say oh I'm not going to do that mm -hmm. yeah the accountability has to be there right well tell us a little bit more about the um the principle that you have on Etsy we'd love to hear about that Right. So I love for people to have an opportunity to DIY before they try. Right. Mm -hmm. So I created mm -hmm. on Etsy a little booklet called Coach My Biz. And you can download it. It's a printable. It's a lot like a day timer with coaching questions. And if you're working with a coach, there's some goal sheets that you can fill out that you can start tracking. Are you on track? Are you working the goals that you said you would? And because it's a printable, you can print it multiple times. You can print individual pages. And it's just really, really a helpful tool. That's great. And they can find that on Etsy and it's called Coach My Biz. Yep. Great. Awesome. Perfect. All right. So Marilyn, let's get to the really super juicy coachy stuff. <laughs> Not that the other stuff isn't juicy because aside, so many people and especially so many women are side hustling. You make an excellent point that there are stay at home moms who are like full in with their kids and they're doing the side hustle. It truly is because they're working at night. They're you know, trying to get their little spots in, but let's get down to the coaching with Radiant Coaches Academy. Uh, one thing that you said, which I love, and I think that people who are listening to this interview um, and are considering going into coaching, they, they need to pay attention to this because you said that you were starting to see that people would confide in you and trust you. And I found the same thing. And I think a lot of coaches do where for me, because I worked in the money world for so long, I'd go to people's houses and suddenly all their like credit card statements are out in front of me. And <laughs> so I, I knew there was something going on there. I needed Fix my life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Finally locked in on, Oh, I can help people with this and make some money doing it as well. So for you, uh, you know, we've all had so many great experiences with our training with radiant coaches and Misty and I have shared some of that. I'm curious to know what you took away from the training? What was most impactful for you that actually quite surprised you? When I was doing the training, so 
it's a two week intensive. That was the route that I chose. Mm -hmm. And I was very committed to being there every day for two weeks. What surprised me was that I already had so many of the skills inside. Mm -hmm. I just needed a few tools to be able to unlock them mm -hmm. and share them with my clients. Yeah. I was surprised by, you know, just how ready I thought I'm not, I can't, I mean, gosh, being a coach is so hard and how am I going to do this? And, and then I'm like, well, I've been doing this my whole life. What's wrong with me? Yeah. The, the radiant training is like a can opener for yeah. all of those things that are on the inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, can you name one of those tools that you use on a regular basis with your clients? Uh, probably the life wheel. We start with that. And, you know, you've seen these life wheels, they're pre-defined and you've got to fill in life and family. But the, the tool that we used was you draw the wheel mm -hmm. and you put as many spokes on the wheel mm -hmm. with as many words as you want. Mm hmm yeah. And it's very individualized. It's not a, a templated approach or a specific process. You cater all of your toolbox to the person that you're with. And I, I also had to learn how to be a much more active listener. I tend to be a very action oriented person. So when somebody else is speaking, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to answer this way. <laughs> Right. So I, I, I had to learn to step back and clear my mind and just be fully present in the listening moment mm -hmm. and to give them the space to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Meredith had an interesting experience. That <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, share, share with the, share with our listeners, Meredith. About sure. Your and I, I think we've, um, we've mentioned this before and probably some other interviews, but this is such an, uh, I think this is a very important story for most people to hear because we think we're good listeners, but most of the time we're, we're poised, ready to respond. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Marilyn. So when I went through my training, uh, we had a day where it was a field trip training day. Actually, it was wonderful. We were over at Misty's beautiful house and it was sunny and warm and I had already pledged the day before that I would not say a word during that training day unless I was called upon and Oof. because what I was noticing the four days leading up this was in the first week of training in the four days leading up I just I would sit there going oh oh I know the answer oh 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 I want to say something and I wasn't listening properly and it was such an awesome exercise because I was observing over and over and over again, this urge to say something. And the active listening is, uh, it's such an important part of coaching, of course, because it allows us to tune into our intuition more. So we know what questions to ask. We know when it's time to offer an observation and it typically we barely talk during the session as coaches. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. That is very correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a great story. I, I'll, pr I'll probably share that until I'm like 110 years old because it's <laughs> so important. <laughs> well, and it was impactful for the, the group as a whole too, I think, because, you know, people don't uh, realize when they're thinking about this coach training, you go in, you know, with all these maybe expectations or uncertainties and you come out on the other end with this amazing core group of of people, you mm -hmm. know, that, that now are, are lifelong friends and, um, confidants and, and people that you can, you can count on. Marilyn, has that been your experience post training as well? Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the other piece is, you know, I wasn't in y'all's class. Jim was, yes. and I got to hear the stories mm, and yeah. just, you know, really felt like I was, you know, a small part of that group just because I got to hear through him. But the beauty of Radiant Coaching community on Facebook is we all support each other, whether we were in class or not together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was really needing to get my 20 hours of coaching in, uh, does help me reach out to our coaching community. And, you know, Jim was way ahead of me. And in one week, I passed him up and got certified. And he's like, what? <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> How did you do that? What happened? Right. Yeah. So uh, he was not, he was not very happy about that. Well, but, Jim, you know. Jim, they don't call her the get it done girl for nothing. Right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And we felt like you were with us as well because Jim had so many mm-hmm. lovely things to say about you throughout the training too. So oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. The, we've heard this before um, over actually I was say over and over again, but truly the community is what carries radiant because you don't just go through the training and see a goodbye. Once you're certified, we, want our coaches to to feel like they're always supported because there is the learning aspect around coaching and there's also the business aspect and that's a huge part of it how do we grow our business and um our coaches are so willing to share their successes so that other people can follow in their footsteps as well Mm -hmm. so thanks we're so grateful to have you as part of this community marilyn Yeah. Thanks, Missy. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, Marilyn, where can our listeners find you? So, my website is 9 to 5 with a side.com. All spelled, no numbers, just 9 to 5. The word not, the number 9, okay. the word 2, and the number 5. Okay, excellent. 9 to 5. And then there was a little part at the end 9 to 5 with. Aside. With a side. <laughs> Great name. Yeah. Thank excellent. you. We'll make sure we get that in the show notes. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for joining us today for this episode of Radiant Radio. It's been our pleasure. Thanks. Love it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to Radiant Radio. To learn more about our program and to connect with our hosts, visit radiantcoaches.com.